Matt Sampson here with Pat Gee of Travelers Insurance and Paul Walsh of the Weather Channel talking a little bit about getting your small business ready for the winter. Uh, the weather factor can be a, both a risk and an opportunity for small businesses. From a risk perspective, what are some of the things small businesses should be planning for? Well, first, broken or burst pipes are one of the leading causes of winter weather damage. So first, outside your property, you're going to want to make certain that all your water and irrigation lines have been drained. Inside, you're going to want to think about uh, an internal temperature monitor to ensure that your temperature is staying within range. You might also want to think about an excess water flow meter. And that'll ensure that uh, you keep track of all the incoming flow into the business, and if anything's unusual, it'll let you know. The other thing is, up on your roof, uh, you obviously want to keep your gutters and your drains clear. And if you live somewhere up in the north or anywhere that it snows, you want to ensure as well that you keep the first few feet of your roof clear. That'll prevent ice dams from occurring. And then operationally, if you don't already have a business continuity plan, now is a great time to do it. That'll ensure that the business can persist even if employees can't uh, perhaps get to your uh, facility. Weather risks vary both on geography and time of year. How should a small business owner think about putting in place a comprehensive insurance program? Business insurance is quite complex. You need to think about risks to your employees, to your products, your property, premises liability, and even your income stream. So we really encourage everyone to work with a licensed professional. That could be your local insurance agent or, or broker. And ensure that they build a coverage that's very specific to your exact business needs. So we know of the physical risks of winter, but what about the financial risks? Business income interruption is probably the primary financial risk to a business. So let's imagine you had a weather event and you couldn't get to your uh, property or facility. Uh, think about the income stream dynamics relative to lost sales or lost production. That's why you need to have that critical backstop in place. So we've got the physical risks, but weather can have a big influence on sales as well. How susceptible are small businesses to financial impacts? Small businesses are very susceptible to, for example, a snowstorm or, or an event that keeps people from the stores. They're also susceptible to significant changes in the weather, and they can be susceptible in a good way. So if there's a cold snap and you're a, a small business that are, that's selling uh, retail apparel, for example. Yeah, if you're selling coats. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it turns cold, all of a sudden you're going to be selling a lot of products. So if you start looking at the weather... Uh, instead of just as, a, as something to inform your activities and start to look at it as a way to inform the way you're managing your business, you can actually start to maximize your sales by being better prepared for the weather and being better uh, merchandise and advertise a little bit better as well. What suggestions would you have for businesses to actually manage the weather? So the first step is to understand how the weather in, has influenced your business in the past. So a lot of small businesses, they know that anyway. They sort of got it in their gut because they've been doing it for a lot of years. For newer business owners, it really be, comes down to a little bit of research to understand what is the weather patterns like where you live and, and how does it impact your, your business. To the extent that you understand how the weather impacts your business, you can actually use the weather forecasts to change how you are going to advertise, for example, how you're going to price your product. So if you're selling uh, jackets and it's been abnormally warm and the forecast is for it to turn very cold, you might not want to mark those jackets down mm -hmm. as much as you might otherwise have. So, so those kind of very tactical but very smart ways to manage your business by leveraging this information helps really optimize how you are running your business. And it's a really important way to uh, flesh out your whole plan. So there's a risk management perspective, but then an operational management perspective. So you're maximizing the benefits of the weather while you're protecting yourself against the risks that are associated from the weather. It sounds like the best approach would blend risk management with operational execution. So how do we get started? Well, we're all so busy, especially business owners, but it's critical we set aside a little time and think about preparation and prevention so we can mitigate damage even before it occurs. But in the unlikely event that something unfortunate does happen, that's where if you've worked with a local professional and you have the right coverage for the specific needs of your business and your products, you'll be positioned well for the future. That's right. And, and from a prevention perspective, in addition to um, making sure you've got enough uh, protection uh, against severe weather, you also think about how you can leverage the weather operationally so that you can maximize your sales. Um, that is a, a key, I think, in terms of blending those two together so that you've created a business that is operational no matter what the weather and you're protected no matter what the weather. Great. Pat Gee and Paul Walsh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Matt.